just like this. So my day. <laughs> I get to wear a lot of hats today. <clears throat> but I've uh, worn a lot of hats over the years for my mom. Most of them are dunce hats that in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was the original kid that had timeouts. <laughs> oh, hi, Opie. <laughs> We have some great looking people here today, and thanks for coming out. And thank you, Joshua. Can we just give him a little clap for setting up everything? <laughs> He's a great guy. And, you know, he, he said, you know, we got to stop needing like this. Because <laughs> we do mostly, um, you know, services for people that have passed away. And it would uh, be nice to do some weddings. And I've got plenty of grandkids to do that with. So mm -hmm. it won't be long. My mom always had a great sense of humor, and so I'll start with a little story. A priest and a taxi driver arrived at the early gates at the same time and were greeted by St. Peter in a golf cart, and he says, hop right in. He starts driving down the streets of gold with beautiful mansions on every street. The priest and the taxi driver get excited seeing all these mansions. St. Peter stops in front of a massive mansion made out of gold and precious stones, with maids and servants, Tending to everything. St. Peter drives up the long curved driveway and tells the taxi driver, Welcome home. The priest gets really excited seeing the taxi driver's home, thinking, Wow, if that's what a taxi driver gets, I can't wait to see mine. St. Peter drives down the street and stops in front of a rather simple three bedroom, two bath home and says to the priest, Welcome home. The priest turns to St. Peter and says, This can't be right. What happened? St. Peter explains, when you preach, people went to sleep. When the taxi driver drove, everyone prayed. <laughs> Sometimes my wife does a lot of praying when I'm driving. Uh, my mom grew up in a family of three girls, and her dad started working at the age of 13 in a steel mill in Los Angeles, believe it or not. Did you know there was a steel mill in the middle of Los Angeles? It was pretty amazing. Um, being the middle sister, she was either told what to do by her big sister or told to watch after her little sister. In that role, she learned to be patient and tolerant. They lived a simple but comfortable life. She always did well at school, and her heart of compassion led her to becoming that candy striper at the local hospital, helping with the elderly and the sick. She was well ahead of the women's movement, being one of the first ladies to take flying lessons even when her dad tried to discourage her. Mm -hmm. I remember my grandfather, just, he told me later on, he said, women don't fly. And she was determined and got her flying lessons. She married my dad when he was in the Navy and it was not long before he got called up to the Philippines at the end of World War II as a plane mechanic. After the Navy, when I was born, they moved to Whittier, California, to a brand new subdivision. It was there that they brought up their three children, me, my brother Paul, and my sister Anne. Being the first child, I was the worst and the main cause of most of the problems between the siblings. Sound familiar? Seems that trial, it seems that trait has been handed down to the no wolf. <laughs> Is that right, Eli? <coughs> and the, the Bible verse, verse is true. Whatsoever you so, you will read. <laughs> my dad decided the house needed a painting, and like everything else, was going to do it himself. He took down the cosmetic wooden slatted shutters and decided they did not need to go back on after he finished painting the house. My mother was a firm believer of Proverbs 13.24 as an expression of loving discipline. It says simply this, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. There was no sparing for me. Absolutely nothing. She used every one of those wooden slats on me, even keeping one in the car. They squashed many rebellions. Do you remember those, Anne? No? Okay. That's because I got them all. I learned to hide. I learned to hide. Yes. And I tell you, she broke every one on my backside. I can honestly say today, 
that I would not be here as I am without that loving discipline for you. I need it every morning. And I'm saying that. <laughs> My mom made sure that we all knew that she loved us enough to make sure that we understood right from wrong. An unwavering belief in Jesus as our Savior empowered her to raise us up with the vision that one day we can all be together when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. She was clear that it didn't make us perfect or better than anyone else. The commitment just made us saved. Somebody say amen to that. I miss her now, but one day we will be together again. And I pray every day that there will be no wooden shutters in heaven. <laughs> I also pray every day that everyone here today can make that same commitment so we can all be together living in our precious mansion just for us. Thank you, David. You know, as David was going through that, he was speaking about his remembrance of his mother. And now, as we get here to this part of the service, it, it's a, kind of a neat thing because as we talk about, um, I'm going to use the word Billy, um, and share the obituary and, and share the eulogy that maybe you as family members would like to get up and, and say how she impressed you. As I said in the opening prayer, anybody that's been 95 years has to impress people somewhere along the line. And maybe it's a, a, a thing, uh, not the board thing, but uh, maybe something similar to that, I don't know. But anyway, that's what this kind of a, a service that we have, what we call it a memorial service, is all about. It's remembering those that have gone on. And it's a time, as, as gratefully, that you all have a chance to share your memories of your experience with her and maybe your interaction with her or how she impressed you in certain ways or whatever. But let's, uh, let's really use this time to just share her life, your life, your life with her and her life with you. So it's time, this time we're setting aside the first part of this for family members to come and, and the microphone, right? Just don't be afraid of it, it won't bite you. Uh, and just speak clearly into the mic and everybody will be able to hear exactly what you're talking about. So if anybody would like to come and share, uh, please, please come now. My youngest, who is also here, was, well, he had announced to us as a toddler that his aspirations were to grow up to be a train. <laughs> He's really into trains. And his grandmother was standing out at the edge of their uh, patio which was in Summerland, overlooking uh, the, the ocean view. And uh, the, one of the 
Amtrak trains was going by on the tracks down below. And David heard that and he went running out and in a, in a flash, he had climbed all the way up on top of Millie's shoulders. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised she didn't lose her balance, but she's all, she's always been ready to support her grand, all of her grandchildren and her interaction with the children, both in field preparation and yard activities. That's just an example.